Um, my name is Michael Crowley. I'm the marketing director. Adam Torville is joining us this morning. Uh, he's our senior marketing specialist as we go through um, the sixth of uh, 13 sessions so far. So uh, let's get into session 3A. This is kind of a cool and unique presentation. There's no printer demo this morning, uh, but we'll kind of talk about um, the unique things that make uh, the printers uh, some of the most versatile pieces of equipment that you can um, either see or purchase, right? You would see, you would see them at a trade show. Uh, the versatility would be apparent when you see the samples that, that are on display and kind of what we would be printing. Um, but this is kind of a, a fun, this is kind of a, um, again, a little bit of a different, a different view on some of the topics that we've discussed so far this week, right? It's kind of like a, a big gallery of items uh, that, that we haven't spoken about at all. Um, and for some of the folks who are new to UV printing, um, it'll kind of get the ideas flowing a little bit on, on what you can use the machine or machines for. Uh, for those that have been using the machines for a while, it might be uh, a little bit inspiring to say, oh, I, you know, I can, I, I can print on that for real, seriously. Um, so we hope that you guys walk away kind of just a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit inspired, a little bit surprised on kind of the stuff that you can put through a UV printer. Um, and then at one o'clock this afternoon is the next printer demo. Um, in a short 30 minute window, we will print uh, golf balls, phone cases, and coasters. So that th at this point, you'll really start to get into the speed, right? And then continuing with that theme, we'll do some, uh, some prints on the 7200, which is our larger printer later this afternoon at three o'clock Eastern. All right. We do want to keep this open. Adam is, Adam is on. He's ready to, uh, to answer any and all questions that might come across. Uh, simply navigate to your Zoom tools at the bottom of the screen. Uh, go to your more button and then you'll be able to see the chat feature. Fire questions along there. Um, Adam will, will stop, interject um, as needed. We want to be able to keep this moving just like we would at a trade show, right? Sometimes we'll be printing something cool at a trade show that someone walks up and uh, pull something out of their pocket and they'll, uh, they'll ask any one, of, any one of our team members to print on it. That kind of stuff draws a crowd, right? And people just kind of fire out questions. So um, if you guys have any pointed questions about a certain application, um, or if you just want to say, hey, can I, print on, uh, can I print on this spray bottle or can I print on this bottle cap, stuff like that, let us know. Uh, we'll try our best to answer for you, okay? And again, you guys see the, see the description for today's session up on, the, uh, up on the screen right now. So it's fairly simple, right? Um, when we start talking about the Flex Ink machine in our, in, in our small format um, unit, like the picture you see on the screen there, you can just do more with it, right? You can do more with a UV printer than you can with a, you know, with a laser. You can do more with a UV printer than you can with, a, with an engraver. For those who joined our first session on Monday where we kind of covered the intro to UV, You'll understand that with the ability to um, jet curable ink and have it cure on the surface, the materials that you can print on um, grow exponentially when compared to other uh, decoration methods, right? Including um, those of like sublimation where you have to have a special coating. Uh, there's a lot uh, to be had here with, uh, with UV printers and there's no doubt about it that it's one of the most versatile pieces of equipment that you would see or uh, have the ability to bring into your shop. Just in terms of products, materials, um, the art files, raised effects, so there are a lot of things and we'll get into some of that momentarily. Again, if you guys do have any questions, fire them along in the chat feature. I do see that we picked up some more, some more attendees uh, who may not have heard that. So again, questions, suggestions, random ideas that might, uh, that might get a couple of laughs, send them over and we'll share them with the group. We wanna keep this, this session um, loose in terms of uh, co as conversational as we can. So what can you print, right? And uh, I would kind of respond to that question with a question. You know, what if I said almost everything? Kind of, you know, surprised and perplexed a little bit. Um, you know, obviously we can't say you can't print on every single thing. Every product should be tested for adhesion. Um, so at least that way you can understand, um, you know, what, what would pass, what would fail, what's acceptable to you, what's not acceptable. But in terms of the product and the product range, it literally is almost everything. Things we wouldn't recommend would be a um, silicone-based product, right? A UV ink won't stick to a silicone-based product. Um, we also wouldn't recommend printing to a mirror. Right? A mirror can cause light reflection or refraction back up into the printhead, which can cause damage to your printhead. So there are some things that you can or can't print. Um, on our systems, you wouldn't be able to print a coffee mug, right? But you can see there's plenty of options in terms of drinkware and bottles that you can print uh, from flat walled bottoms, uh, bottles there, double walled, uh, tapered pint glasses, Yeti mugs, stuff like that. Okay, so it literally is almost everything. And we hope that we kind of open your eyes through this session a little bit on some of the cool things that you can, that you can print. The somewhat mundane, right? And when I say mundane, they're, they're, they're flat, they're easy. Um, it's a lot of the stuff that we are highlighting this week. But with that, there's a lot of demand for these types of for, for these types of items. There's a lot of manners in which you can decorate them. There are a lot of different elements that you can add to these types of things. So even though they're mundane, 
they're still wildly popular. And, you know, just like the definition of popularity, they're popular for a reason, right? The masses are, are, are kind of clamoring for them. So on the screen now, you have, you have some gauges, you have some acrylic awards, you have phone cases, all simple flat types of products, right? With the gauges, um, it's pretty cool because we have the ability to print really fine text and detail on gauges like that, right? You can also start with a white gauge and you could turn the white gauge blue, right? With the full color range with the UV printer. So um, again, even though they are mundane, um, there, are, there, there are premiums, there are retail premiums that can be had here, um, you know, if you are able to market it and such. Again, keeping with the same mundane um, type of um, product, uh, golf balls, who doesn't want a logo golf ball, right? We have uh, plenty of folks who are, who are doing that in mass quantities, but then the picture on the left there, bottles, shirts, uh, phone cases, all with a single printer, right? And it's a lot of the stuff that we'll, we'll be sharing the rest of the week too, right? We'll show you guys kind of some of the speeds. We'll talk about pricing, we'll talk about price points. Uh, we'll talk about uh, ROI examples uh, through our calculator that we've shown at a bunch of the other sessions. So there's a lot, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of opportunity here, and it's something that uh, we don't want you guys to get lost in when we start really showing showing the cool stuff. Um, Adam has a bunch of familiarity and, and, and has a lot of knowledge of uh, many other printers. Um, Adam, in terms of the versatility um, and the experience that you have with some of the U other UV printers in the market, well, would you rate um, you know the, the DCS equipment um, higher, lower, um, in the middle of the pack in terms of versatility? What are some of your thoughts uh, based on the experience that you've had? Yeah, I'd rate the the DCS printers on the higher end of versatility, just because you do have the ability to do cylindrical, flat, uh, ADA, textured, and even uh, textile printing. So there's not many uh, printers on the market that can do all of that. Um, as far as I know, the DCS is the only one that is able to do the Braille and uh, DTG all on the same printer. So it's definitely the most versatile machine I am aware of and have seen. Yeah, and um, you'll hear us uh, talk about it. Um, I call it clear ink and clear ink effects. Adam um, lovingly refers to our clear ink as varnish. Um, and there are a lot of cool effects that can be had with that, uh, both um, as a complement and as a standalone print. And we'll show you some examples of that moving forward. Um, one thing we always recommend, customize when you can, right? Because you can charge a premium for that. The bottles on the left are obviously produced on a, on a mass quantity, right? All with the same logo but that doesn't change the time or really the prep work to create the bottles on the right, right? That's a baseball team's worth of, worth of bottles there, right? That's for a little league. That's um, a sponsor had, had, um, had asked us to do some samples. And, you know, when it comes to local stuff like that, we'll always donate it if we can use it for a social post and things like that. Right. So um, customize it when you can uh, with UV printing being a digital process, it's very easy to do so with variable data, you can um, set it up and all those files will be done for you. All right, so there's a couple different ways to go about that. Uh, for some of our customers and some folks who are online on our DCS um, users group uh, on Facebook, that is not a group that DCS manages, but it is a group that was put together by some customers and it continues to grow. Um, it's a great resource. Uh, people post photos like this on there all the time. Um, and, I, you know, and, and I can say it was a great help in um, helping me put this uh, presentation together. So uh, there are a lot of great photos on there. Uh, it's always good to talk to other users. Um, as I mentioned in previous, uh, you know, demos and presentations, we do have our print innovators at directcolorsystems.com. Those are also folks that you can check in on, you know, ask questions. They post photos. They have Facebook pages um, and, and other social media outlets where they're posting a lot of their awesome work. Annie up, right? Another simple, um, staying with the kind of somewhat mundane flat printing type of thing, poker chips, right? Doesn't have to be, um, you know, for, for any of the, for any of the casinos, but it could be for fun, could be for giveaways, could be for gifts, could be could be for casinos, right? Depending on the depending on the on the volume and the demand that you have there. Um, so there's plenty of opportunity there, right? That would just be a um, um, you know a standard poker chip. You'd obviously test for adhesion. Um, if if you did have um, an issue with adhesion on some of these types of things, because they can sometimes have a slick finish, maybe adding in the clear ink as an underbase would really help um, the adhesion on such a thing, right? Because these things will be handled. So again, um, I mentioned previously on a bunch of other demos, uh, getting samples done and understanding the steps to, to produce that um, goes a long way in understanding and uh, developing the business case so you can bring a printer into your business. Something that's pretty fun and some of the folks on the call uh, might be tired of, uh, of hearing me talk about. Of course, with the machines, you can print ADA Braille signage. And then kind of a little conversation that I had with myself there when I was putting this together. Um, you know, did I, did I mention that we have three patents? Everyone's probably nodding yes to way too many times. Um, how many times have I done it? Only a hundred times. And I apologize for that. But again, it is a 
highly profitable application. Okay. And with the amount of volume that we get on it and with the amount with the amount of interest, I'm lumping it into the mundane category, right? Because we do so much of it, customers do so much of it. Super high profit potential. We kind of covered all of that. Um, but even there, you see, we know we're doing some cool things that, especially that sign on the left there. It's uh, not only a, a, um, a braille sign, but it does have a little textured leaf aspect on it too. So uh, with a background print. So you can kind of take it uh, creativity to the limit, even on something simple like a sign. For those who do request our, um, our PowerPoints and our presentations, uh, we, don't, we don't mind sharing them with you. The cool thing, and I wanted to show this one, is um, all the clickable links there. Um, and so I could even add some more. Um, those are all clickable links to videos, right? So th th those are quick little, little hit, uh, you know, minute, minute and a half videos of, um, of us actually printing to those products. So if you have any, in any interest, um, if you can't join any of the other demos, uh, let us know. We'd be happy to send you, send you all the links to these videos that I kind of noted here. Right. And it, it, it runs the gamut, right, from Braille science to Canvas to everything else. And a lot of stuff we'll get into momentarily. Again, if you guys do have any questions, Adam's at the ready. So, so fire them along. Even if it's something silly, can you print on that? Let us know. Um, it might be a good idea for a social post uh, from us if we can do it, or we'll let you know why we couldn't do it. One printer. Uh, this is a cool little photo. This is a rack that we bring around to a lot of the big shows. Everything on that rack printed with one printer. Right, and you can just kind of see the, the span of product. You have Frisbees on there. You have uh, you know, those little metal signs um, or that wooden box on the, at the top were, were purchased from a, from a craft store. You have photo books, photo frames. There's even a drumstick on there. Phone cases, acrylic award, the blue square on the bottoms and a, um, a ceramic tile. Uh, clearly you have the cylindrical and the water bottles and you even have hockey pucks. All right, so all of those things printed with one single piece of equipment. A nice kind of a, a cool little photo. And, you know, if you were at ISA this week, you would see a, a rack very similar to that. Before we get into some of the other stuff, um, I know I kind of just talked about some of the, min, the mundane stuff, but you can still make big profits on simple or general application, right? When we look at our application page, we kind of cater to that in terms of, uh, you know, search engine optimization and what we drive people to. We have all these application pages. Um, that's kind of your bread and butter type of stuff, right? That's where the volume lives. That's where a lot of the popularity lives but it doesn't mean you can't move into, into some of the things that we'll show um, in a couple minutes. Sitting there saying, you know, just like the description said, what about all the cool stuff guy, right? I'll, uh, I, I've tried to get through some of that, right? Coolest, weirdest, um, and some of the awesome stuff. We do have a session tomorrow with, uh, with some customers um, that I've been kind of, uh, you know, hyping up a little bit here as we move through the week. Uh, someone like Dan Keyes who will be on the call. There's a lot of cool, you know, you know what, right? Just like that graphic on the side there says. So um, always a good resource. And, uh, you know, we'll get into some photos here. You're probably saying, yeah, I know you guys can print golf balls. Cool, see it, but uh, what else can I do? This is my reminder to remember the NDAs, right? So we do this type of presentation to internal folks, right? So we do, we do all of our manufacturing out of Connecticut. Um, and some of the guys who manufacture the machines don't necessarily know where all the machines go all the time. So it's a, you know, it's a, it's a fun presentation that we have that we offer to our uh, to our employees a couple times a year, where we where where we give them an update on what we're doing. But there are NDAs in place, right? Um, so I can't necessarily show you all those types of things. I can show you what I can find and what I'm comfortable and and and, and know I can share. But there are other things I just can't share. And, I, and trust me, I would love to from from big names and companies that everybody knows to just some really really awesome stuff. But um, legally and, and and contractually, we can't share everything. So I did my best in in, in putting a lot of that together. Um, and again, I, I hope you guys, uh, you know, leave this with a good understanding of kind of some of the stuff that you can, that you can and can't do. So with those NDAs, there's a lot of stuff I can say, but I can't show. So I'll speak in general terms there. There's a lot of stuff on the screen there, everything from sporting equipment, um, you know, just not the, uh, you know, just not the baseballs and the soccer balls that you'll see. I'm on our Facebook page, uh, but you know, actual sporting equipment. I mean, you, you move around the list there. We've, we've done toilet seats in the past. Um, you know, memorial, when I put memorial in there, I'm, I'm talking about, um, you know, urns and pet headstones and, um, you know, uh, river rock that has been turned into to memorial pieces with the, with the explosion of legalized marijuana and, 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 and the vape craze. I mean, we do our fair share of samples for folks looking to take advantage of this type of, uh, equipment. We've done prosthetics, believe it or not. Um, you know, stereo equipment, speakers, headphones, tap handles, cool stuff like toys. Um, and then there are Vegas hotels and, and theme parks that have our equipment. So um, again, I would love to be able to show you a lot of the photos on, on these things. I can't, again, I'm just kind of give you general markets in which, uh, in which these products go into uh, just to try to get the, the creative juices flowing a little bit. Again, if you guys do have any questions, fire them along in the chat and, and Adam will, uh, will either try to answer them directly or he'll share them out to the group. 
So let's pull back the curtain a little bit here. Let's uh, let's show some of the cool things before we uh, before we end uh, this session, right? Um, like I said, we do try to keep these sessions quick. We want to keep them quick moving, uh, 30, 35 minutes max. So let's get into some of the some of the cool photos, right? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Um, very similar to some of the mundane uh, things that you see, but uh, customizable, uh, valuable. You have dominoes on the left, you have uh, USB sticks on the right. We have folks printing on all different types of materials when it comes to the USB sticks too. Unique shapes, right? The ones that are in the shapes of, uh, of cars and, and people uh, to, to little clip versions that you see there. There are ones that are you know all clear, all wood. Uh, there, there's a lot to be had there. Um, all the costs have gone down, um, you know, relatively speaking to the actual, uh, you know, the material cost or the product cost to, to print to. Um, and when they're flat like this, it's very easy to print to a product like this. Again, test for adhesion. Oldies but goodies. Yes, you can, you can print on a candle like that, uh, that photo on the left there. Yes, you can pick the ink off a candle, right? If you tried hard enough, you can, you can pick your way all the way to the wick. Um, so, but uh, you know that that is something that uh, when we first launched the Easy Sill many many years ago, a lot of folks were interested in, right? And then you look at the photo on the right, very simple uh, color only print on the sides of the sunglasses. It's just building a jig capable of holding those types of things. Okay, um, so again, you might not have been you might not have thought you can print on the um, on the sunglasses. Oh no, th those are easy. If they come apart, they're even easier, right? But you can definitely with six inches of height clearance on on our S15 model, you have. Uh, plenty of height clearance to, uh, to jig those up in a manner that allows you to print on both sides of those sunglasses. Wine, anyone? Another, you know, simple, but, you know, kind of out of the box type of thing. Um, wine boxes, cigar boxes. Um, there's a textured logo you see at, on the top photo and on the bottom um, was what, you know, I was kind of mentioning where Adam calls it varnish. I call it um, clear ink. You can kind of see the way the light hits it there. It kind of adds kind of a nice high-end type of look, right? Instead of laser etching it, you can kind of give this type of effect where it's, uh, you know, depending on the way the light hits it, you can incorporate that level of print with a color with a with a colored print, and um, it makes for a dynamic finished product. Adam, any crazy ideas or uh, or, or or questions come through the chat at all yet? Yeah, um, Victor want to know if we could print uh, directly to Yetis and if it needed a primer. Um, Yeti stainless steel mugs will need a uh, wipe on primer uh, just so you can get uh, some form of durability in terms of scratch resistance and a little bit of water resistance. Um, they'd still be hand wash only. They wouldn't be dishwasher safe. So you would have to apply a primer before printing. And if uh, for those who are interested in seeing that application, check the schedule. Um, we are either running that um, that portion of a of, of a demo and printing to um, tumblers like that. It's either tomorrow afternoon or one of the ses sessions on Friday. But it has not occurred, and I know it's not today. So all the sessions, believe it or not, guys. Some of you guys might be tired of hearing my voice, but um, they're starting to blend a little bit. So um, take a look at the schedule, directcolorsystems.com. We do have an upcoming session on tumblers. Um, moving along on the, to the photos on the screen there, yes, cured ink is safe, right? So you see onesies there, right? Um, babies, won't, everyone wants our, wants our children to remain safe. We did send cured ink out to, out to um, TTL Labs in Rhode Island. Um, we tested it for CPSIA, uh, both um, in a cured ink, um, you know, in a, in, a, in a swatch of just cured ink only, and on, um, on, on a garment as well. And uh, those results are on our website. It, um, all of our Flex Inc. did pass those types of tests. So if you ever want to see what those results were, uh, feel free to navigate to our DTG page of our website and um, they're all there in, in uh, linked form. Going to full production, right? Now we're starting to get into some unique shapes. Um, there's a custom made jig, right? Made for these little bottle clips. Um, the, the gentleman who's doing this does, uh, you know, um, very high volume on one machine with this product. Um, we did extensive adhesion testing for them, right? It's, it's, it's kind of the thing where we talk about, hey, can you, can you, um, can, how does this fit into your business? We'd be happy to print a few samples for you, document the settings. Um, and this gentleman here is a, is a really active member in that Facebook group and, and we'll always share kind of cool photos that he's doing. Um, what I like to show is just the, just the, the manner and the, and the robustness of the jig that he made and then obviously the, the final product that you see there. Part marking, we always urge you to test for adhesion. 
clearly the button there is going to be, um, you know, touched and touched often or, or has a potential to be um, either touched or, or, or scratched. Um, you see another version of a jig there. You see an, a unique portion um, of the product where it protrudes above the surface of the, um, of the, uh, of the product. So it's a little bit different than, you know, those flash drives and those, uh, and those um, dominoes, but it's not increasingly difficult, especially if you have an engineer drawing of that actual part, right? You can kind of drop that right into your software um, based on your layout and your jig and you know where you're printing the product, right? If you are a little unsure, put a little bit of clear tape on the button, do a test print and see where and see if it lines up and adjust it that way, right? That's just kind of a, you know, flying by the seat of your pants type of way, um, but it's a method that works, right? Again, guys, if you guys have any questions, fire them, fire them through. We'll, uh, we don't mind stopping and going back if we have to. Art is life, and this is kind of another another application that we'll highlight later this week. Printing to canvas, store ball canvas, craft store canvas, um, easy. There's a, there's a lot of value to be had there, especially if you start printing photographs or if you get linked up with a wedding photographer in your area. Um, you can print photos or you know art files like you see here, the one that we did at Post Malone, but um, you can also add texture to it, right? And that's kind of what our focus will be um, on the session later this week. One recommendation, um, just from a user perspective, if you are printing to the larger canvases with the larger machine, um, go up in the actual value of the product in which you're purchasing or um, a better way, buy a better quality um, raw, raw canvas. When you um, move into the slightly higher end or the slightly more expensive um, canvases and not just the economy line, they do have a middle support. So when you start to get into your two foot by three foot canvases, if you don't have that middle support, the canvas in the center can actually sag um, and then ink is jetting farther, uh, which leads to a distorting of a print, right? So you granted, you, I mean, you, you can always build something up, but if you just step up the, uh, the, um, the quality of the plaque, that'll come across and that'll, and, and that'll help alleviate any print concerns on some of the larger plaques. Sporting goods. If you're, if you're following us on, uh, on Facebook, we do a lot of this stuff. We print a lot of baseball, soccer balls, very easy to print. Um, but again, there's, there's a lot of stuff there, right? We see a lot of our trophy, our trophy customer uh, and award shop customers doing that type of thing. Uh, game balls, giveaways, uh, uh, commemorative for, for coaches or seniors. Um, so again, just, ju just start to think of what you can do with the machine outside of just imprinting logos. Metal or metal? Uh, how about both? One thing I like to point out, clearly the one on the left is, is, is fairly self-explanatory, but the, the, the medals, right, Olympic, when I'm, Olympic medallion or Olympic style medallions on the right there, you can kind of see the outer edge do, is higher than the actual imprint area, right? So in our software, when we talk about uh, UV printers and, and, and allowing us to, to control drop size, um, you can change the droplet size. You can go to an all large dot print mode, and now you can kind of print down into that cavity there, right? We're not dropping the ink half an inch, but we're going from 40 thousandths of an inch um, printing above the surface to that drop is probably about 80 thousandths of an inch, right? Something that would need to be tested, but it is possible, right? With some, with some software adjustments. Again, we're not dropping um, ink or, or, or clear print down, you know, half an inch, but in a case like this, it's something that, um, that can really drive home um, efficiencies, right? Because the only other way to kind of do that in full color would be to print a disc and then manually affix it in the center of that metal. Flex and squeeze with the with the flexible links that we have. Um, you do have the ability to print on those types of those types of products. Um, we don't see a lot of it just because uh, pad print tends to rule the day on it, just uh, based on quantity um, and, and and such. But um, know that you can do it, right? And because UV is a digital process, you can take advantage of the smaller runs. Um, so instead of having uh, 250, 500 minimum, you know you can do 50 or 60 of them uh, with relative ease. So just start to think about, um, you know, that type of thing. How can you capture some of that uh, small volume market with a UV printer? Because the opportunity is there for you. I'll stop at some of that, you know, more simple stuff before we get into the weird and wonderful. I've been talking for a while here. It's been about 25 minutes. Adam, I don't know if you have any questions, suggestions, um, ideas for some, you know, otherwise cool stuff that, that, that may have come through. If not, I'll, I'll keep cranking here. Yeah, no, we just had some questions from some of the some of the attendees here uh, about uh, how well UV ink holds up outdoors. Um, in terms of fade resistance, the ink has good for up to two years. Um, if you want to laminate it, you know, you can get up to five years. 
And then in terms of adhesion, you know, that has to be tested with each product as um, it should be, just to make sure that, you know, it's not going to come off after two weeks or three months. Yep. And, and uh, further to the outdoor durability point, um, I don't re recall if I covered this or not, and I apologize if I didn't during yesterday afternoon's um, ADA sign demo, we were printed on the duets tactiles. Um, we worked with, uh, with Gemini on getting the, uh, the science tested and they all went in a QUV chamber. Um, and that simulated two years outdoors, right? So that's uh, temperature change, uh, sunlight, um, and it, you know, I think it's done over a six week period, but it simulates two years outdoors. Um, and I was thrilled with the results that we had from that in terms of, uh, you know, greens are still greens, uh, reds are still reds. Um, and again, it is pigmented ink, so you don't have to necessarily worry about that. But to Adam's point, you can always um, prolong um, outdoor life by, uh, by adding extra clear ink on top as well. Yeah. And another question too, um, Jerry wanted to know how much texture can be printed on canvases in terms of, I'm guessing, probably thickness. Mm -hmm. So. We've always we've always done single pass texture, right? Now, if it was a piece of aluminum, you can print the texture 3D mode multiple multiple times, um, and it's you know it obviously takes a long time, but you know you can get you know every bit of quarter inch um, rel relatively quickly. In terms of the canvas, we would run it through you know our, our normal texture mode, which would be slightly less, or you know what I when I say normal texture mode, I'm talking about like texture max or texture extreme, and we are running um, and that's slightly lower than a braille dot. Right. So that, that, that would kind of be your max height, or at least that's the max height we've done. I'm not aware of any customers doing it um, more than that. Um, but it, you know, depending on if the, if the, if the canvas can hold it, um, it's definitely worth trying. We haven't been requested to do so, but um, I wouldn't necessarily close the book on that one immediately. I would actually like to try that one. Especially if it was, um, you know, if you had to go to a second or third pass, maybe it was only certain segments that you needed uh, raised higher than the others, but um, definitely sounds doable. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking is you could create a base layer and then add in a, a second layer if you wanted to have even more height in certain spots. Ready to move on, Adam? Yep. Okay. So what, what I loosely term the weird and wonderful, and there's a lot of stuff that comes in that's under NDA. So I wish I can share kind of the really, really weird stuff with you. This is the part of the presentation that when we deliver it, to, um, you know, internally to you know, to the DCS employees, it gets a lot of chuckles and stuff like that. Um, but again, there's still stuff to be had here, right? A different spin on DTG doesn't need to be t-shirts and onesies or cotton product, right? We're our machine with UV and we'll get, and we'll get into this during our, um, during our DTG demo later this week. Um, our machine really shines on the ability to print everything, right? That we showed so far and polyester garments, which is what you see in front of you here, right? We have hockey jerseys and we have football pants, um, nice and easy to print. Uh, the ink really bonds well to the polyester and you still get your great color pop. So there's kind of a different spin, right? DTG doesn't just have to mean shirts. It can mean other, other garments as well. So again, football pants, and then you have the uh, hockey jersey on the right. Hit the lights. Um, this is a kind of a cool, a cool product. We've, we've tested a lot of uh, products since then. And, um, um, you know, th that type of testing is, is ongoing. But this is a glow-in-the-dark material where we only printed the black ink. Okay. So then when you... Um, you know, you expose that to the light and then you were to, you were, you were to turn out the light, you would, um, the, the glow in the dark material would only show through, through the negative space, right? Wildly popular, um, becoming, if, if it's not already, it's a, it, it will be a requirement, you know, in, in New York city, um, buildings and parking garages to do stuff like this. Um, so again, don't turn it away because we can't jet, um, um, glow in the dark inks. You can do it this way, right? Through, through the use of negative space. Yep, there's a printer to print on, you know, big and cool stuff. That's the, uh, um, the front of a drum set there that you see. Um, that was done from a customer of ours down in uh, Maryland, I believe, right? So somewhere in the mid-Atlantic, it was Maryland or Delaware. And I apologize for, for mixing that up. But they printed, that, printed it on their 7200. Um, as you know, the drum heads come off the, um, come off the drums with, with relative ease with a with the, with the key. And um, design your art file, and away you go. Nice and easy, right? And you can see kind of how we were able to um, jet the ink a little bit further down the sides there um, and it adds to a nice finished look when it's uh, when it's all put together super tiny products here these are very small lego parts and if you look to the photo on the left there that little green where it kind of looks like a canister it's really nothing more than um 
for the folks in the room who, who built Lego cars or have children who play with Legos, that's like one of those little Lego torch, you know, the top of a torch or, or, or a headlight. Um, it's that little cyl cylindrical uh, single piece um, or single stud type of um, Lego part. So we're talking very, very small. Same goes for the, for the one in the center there. That's that little um, single studded cube with, uh, cube with, the, uh, with the light on top there. Very cool, very small. Um, obviously you have the ability to, to do many of them uh, very easily in a single pass. Our registration allows you to, to, you know, to get that warning sign, to get that skull print on that very small brick. Clearly, they're using a jig for this, um, and it's something that, with the with the repeatability of our machines, is rather easy to accomplish. Getting into you know large and fun stuff, clearly this this bumps it back up to our 7200, right, two foot by four foot. Also, the perfect size for cornhole boards. If you if you're familiar with the game, uh, full graphics on both of them. The wood grain was actually printed on the on the um, on the example on the right, um, and that's interesting because most of them are usually made of pine, right? So um, usually they're painted white, and then we print it on top. We have ha we have seen some examples where people will use a higher quality wood. They will polyurethane it so the wood grain shows through, and then they might add a small logo or text at the bottom using using the 7200. Clearly, much faster um, in terms of print time. I mean, it adds a complete, um, a completely different spin on on the way the final product looks. But something that large, um, easy to do, um, again, and it's fun. Roomba, um, kind of a unique product that uh, that a customer out in California is printing on. If it fits, if it fits, print it right. Um, so depending on the model, uh, you know, take the 1800s for example. There's a 12 inches by 24 inch print area. But the, the opening or the throat on the machine is actually 13 inches, right? Which, so the Roomba just fits there. And they were printing, obviously, lo, um, logos on there for, for, for corporate giveaway. So uh, very cool. Um, again, that's, that, that's one of those cool things that you see from a customer posted in that Facebook users group. Um, very awesome to see. I always, I always try to, to urge our customers to, to share stuff when they do it or, you know, share cool stuff. Or, you know, I don't normally use the, the term stuff, but you know what I'm getting at. Very cool, something that I would have never thought of. Um, but once I saw it come across, I'm like, oh, you know, that wouldn't be overly difficult, but that's uh, pretty weird and wonderful. And then we have uh, this. This photo was shared by uh, Cav Tool. They're based in Michigan. They make a lot of jigs for, for, for customers of ours. Um, here's one that they made, obviously, to hold to hold shoe in place for, for someone who's looking to print on shoes. Uh, Fixturing is key. When you start to get into the weirdly shaped things, um, you know, most jigs are, are, are acrylic based and um, it's simple. They could be done with a with, with an engraver or a router, um, but in this case, it needed to be something a little bit more a little bit more um, robust and, and and obviously have these extra elements on it. So, uh, just just don't think it's not possible. Talk to experts. Ask us. Talk to folks like Cav Tool that make jigs, um, and uh, you'd be surprised what, what what you can print to. So that's kind of a lot of the stuff that I've been able to show that I can show you with uh, with safety without violating any NDAs. I do see the chat feature blinking. Um, Adam, I don't know if there's any ideas, but I'll leave this slide up for a little while and uh, we can kick some things around a little bit. Uh, no, uh, we're good. We're just answering questions about jigs. Um, the tables on the printers actually have some uh, registration holes. So if you're creating a jig and there's a PDF for that, uh, you would just end up making sure that you follow the guidelines and those registration holes will help uh, line your jig to the table when you're printing. Uh, one of the other things too with uh, jigs, just make sure that you paint them black or have them done in black so that you don't get a uh, reflection back up towards the uh, print head. Always, always, you know, we've even had some folks who will, who will, you know, run to Lowe's or Home Depot, buy, buy a can of matte, um, matte black spray paint and, and, and they'll take it to that if they, if the only product they have to cut on their laser is a, uh, you know, a glossy piece of acrylic. Um, one little tip and trick that I, you know, that I can share and we, we use it sometimes when in a pinch at like a show or something, um, golf ball jigs are easy to make, but when you get to some of the other stuff, like the baseballs, um, or like a soccer ball, you, and if you're not printing high volumes of them, you could use very simple thing. Right? And some of the previous demos Kyle showed you where you'd print the outline to do a baseball. Uh, a Gatorade cap works works very well. Um, some of the other things you can use a you know at a show if somebody pulls a golf ball out and we don't have the golf ball jig with us, you can use a water bottle cap, right? You would just print the circle on the bed, you know, where you place your cap. That's the center of your artwork. Okay. For the soccer balls, we use a roll of tape. Um, 
we even have some customers who will use Legos, right? They'll, do, they'll put the, uh, the big uh, green piece where they can build around it um, and, and, and they'll use that to hold, to hold products in place if they don't have the ability to make a jig. So you'd be surprised how resourceful some people get when it comes to jig and fixturing. Uh, modeling clay is another great, um, great thing to either hold things down or prop certain areas up. Um, we use it a lot in our in our lab when you know when when prospective customers only send in a couple pieces. We have to get creative with how we can um, how we can jig it up, right? We might not have the ability to to laser out a jig, so uh, clay does help as well. Anything else, guys? In terms of like, um, I mean, we we've seen some crazy stuff come in that we that, that that we couldn't print to. One time, somebody sent in a garbage can with a foot pedal on it, right? And they wanted to print it on the on the larger machine and have it hang off the side very difficult to do just because of the protrusion of the foot pedal. But if there's anything that you guys have questions on or, you know, any random, um, I'm not going to say the word stupid because there are no stupid questions. We'll say silly, right? So, so ask away. Um, and, uh, Adam will monitor that and I'll, I'll keep this open as we, as we finish up through the, through the final slides here, but I hope you guys got a little bit of a kick out of some of the stuff. Hopefully it opened up your eyes to some things. Um, and hopefully you'll join us for some of the other, some of the other sessions, but chat features open. As I mentioned yesterday, um, there are some really aggressive financing options available for you. Uh, we referenced 1800 SF, uh, S15 today. Um, you know, you can see it there, uh, $280 for the first year, followed by, followed by the 3.9% the for, the, for the remaining 48 months. So we know it's kind of a wild time. There's a lot of opportunity out there. Um, don't let that prohibit you from, from, from jumping at some, jumping at the technology that can help really kind of, you know, get, get, get you going when everything ramps back up. Um, but let us know if you guys have any, have any questions on, on, uh, on the financing offers that was, that, that, that was released effective this morning. And as always, we have more at our virtual expo. Um, the next session, one o'clock, we'll be printing out promo items, right? We'll do, like I mentioned before, golf balls, wood coasters, and phone cases all on a single, all on a single, um, application. And then we have our, our first 7200 um, web demo later this afternoon. Tomorrow, back to the 7200 with printing texture on, on Canvas. And then kind of our one of our highlight uh, sessions for the week will be that middle one um, at one o'clock Eastern. Uh, what's the story? It's a customer experience. We have um, Dan Keyes from out in San Jose. We have Randy Heron from Maryland. And we have Mike Kuzmic from, from Casey Custom Science who will join us to talk about their experience. Um, and then we, we'll have a few more sessions after that as we round out the week on Friday. So questions, sample requests, um, always get samples done. Always understand kind of how it fits into your business. Again, Adam and I are here uh, to answer any questions. Adam, I don't know if anything's come across the chat that we need to throw out on the floor now, um, but the mic's open. If not, I'll, uh, I'll thank everybody for, for, for attending now. So you got anything? Uh, Scott just was wondering what's the deepest uh, depression we can print into uh, he, when we showed the metals. Yep. So it's obviously dependent upon the part in the product. Um, we've been able to print, you know, fairly deep, half an inch, but that's a very uh, special uh, sample that we were doing where there was no wind turbulence or anything like that that could affect the placement of the drops. Yeah, and there's and, and th th that's art file dependent too, right? I'm fairly mm -hmm. comfortable with kind of doubling the distance. I know we can probably nail that every time. Now, if you're just looking to try to get blue ink down into a certain cavity, um, clearly there's no text, there's no clarity, you know, we can jet the ink pretty far at that point and you can build jigs or you can add tape in order to do so where you don't, um, ruin the integrity of your print head. Um, but you'd have to pay attention to what you're doing at that point. You'd have to test it. Um, if you have a specific, um, product in mind, send us some photos of it. We can, you know, let you know, yay or nay. Right. W one cool thing that we've, that, that we tried to print on a couple times for, for, uh, for a few, for a few folks, um, or like, um, bike rims, right? And the spokes kind of got in the way and they, uh, there, there were weird angles to them where they asked us to jet the ink pretty far. Um, and that's a significant drop, right? From the, from the widest point to the thinnest point. So it wasn't something that we were able to go all the way, all the way to the end on. Um, but we got a, we got a little bit further than halfway down. The print was still of quality, um, and they liked it, but they just needed a little bit. They needed to, to, to span the whole product, right? So that's something that we necessarily couldn't do, but we took a shot at it. We, we reviewed it. We talked to the experts in the building. Um, so if you guys do have any questions like that, send some photos and we can get the conversation started.